I'm Oscar. And I'm Jake. Uh, we're Bad News Pizza. Bad News Pizza is uh, a way for us to take the ingredients being produced by the community and offer them up to, uh, to everyone. It's a brand. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. A lifestyle brand. So kind of the inspiration for it was basically like, I'm from the East Bay area and there's a couple pizza places, cheese board pizza and then Chez Nice, which is a really well-known establishment. We kind of tried to, in a way the concept was to fuse the two styles, which cheese board is a much more casual style. It's also a cheese shop, so they use tons of different kinds of like cool cheeses and then Chez Panisse is a little more like uh, refined so we kind of tried to mix them and uh, yeah then we just started making pizza in Jake's kitchen you know Jake he does the dough stuff and he puts the vegetables and the cheese on the dough and then I put the dough in the hot box <laughs> and the dough cooks and then we, we put it in a, in a cardboard box and people <laughs> like it. I really like uh, I really like working with the farmers. We like meet a lot of really weird people, a lot of kooky people. The vegetable growers up here are pretty strange and it's, it's fun talk. They're pretty strange. <laughs> it's just really cool, one, to like take all these ingredients, all these really interesting people are, are growing and then to see that that thing that we're making that we're putting like so much fucking time into and seeing people enjoy it, that's like the bigger thing. We make no fucking money. We're broke. <laughs> it's definitely more of like just something that is cool to have in the community, but I wouldn't say it's like it's not either of our first jobs. So, but it's definitely not. That's not the the point of it. My name is Daniel, but some people call me Little Getty. So when I heard about Humbled Homies and I was seeing what, inst like just you know on Instagram, seeing that the the advertisements for it, I just thought it was like just like honestly like the coolest thing ever. It allows for us to just really, because as creators, I think it's always dope to see what people are up to and to provide space for us to share all that can really live and in color, you know, paint the community. Whereas like, that's why I like collective works of art. Sharing art is a very vulnerable thing and it takes a lot to do so and to put yourself out there. And you know, to have it in my own space, I guess it makes me more comfortable to, to share what I am, but I also want to allow that for others to do the same as well. Humble Homies created this platform and created connections and to be like, you know, BIPOC and queer friendly for a lot of folks. And that's like, for a very predominantly white area, that was like, I think that was really cool to have that platform to share it. And it makes me feel like we get to see a lot of different voices heard and that kind of gives it its own edge to it. Like something that I feel like you probably won't get in the Nards Alive. It's a more of like, speaks to a generation of a lot of folks and takes a community. We already had a couple people say that they'd be willing to do their house in November and like let's just keep it going. I do all the work this time around and next time I won't, I'll probably have to do less and then someone else will do all the work. But not all the work, but it's like spread it evenly enough. Just a fair amount. So yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Merrick McKinley. I am one of the owners of Richard's Goat Tavern um, in Arcata, California. We kind of see ourselves as an event space, so I mean we are just a regular bar, but um, really we always wanted to have an event space. Um, you know, I was doing DIY house shows for at least a decade, you know, just living here and being an HSU student, you know, bringing in bands from around the country and getting them to stop. It's a great place in between San Francisco and Portland, obviously, so we're um, always looking to kind of bring in 
outside influences and then kind of build up whatever local influences are going on too. So like our local music nights are some of our favorite nights because we get a lot of people coming out and supporting their friends and stuff like that. So um, we like to do a lot of events because we feel that's part of our mission statement, you know, like bringing in, connecting the outside world and kind of building up the what's happening organically locally too. So we've been trying to do as many shows as possible since COVID opened up and it's been going pretty well. Um, honestly, I feel like after COVID, people are even more enthusiastic and it's been a little bit easier doing events. Um, I feel like there's an extra thirst to kind of have that live experience. And so it's um, been going well. Been, it's been paying off kind of taking that chance and throwing more parties. One of the advantages there's like it's just basically me and friends. And so um, anytime somebody has input, um, I'm really easy to reach. And if we can make something happen, we generally do. You know, I think uh, people reach out to me all the time and we have like a handful of uh, booking agencies that kind of bring their acts here. And most of the time it works out. I'd say 80% of the time we're able to find a time and a place to um, kind of get that going. So we do take requests and we do work with the local community to kind of showcase what what they want to see here for sure.